This is Man at Arms, Reforged. Today we're making a Viking Dane axe used by the Raider in For Honor, which will be available on February 14th. In For Honor, you step into a visceral battlefield and fight as some of history's greatest warriors, the Vikings, the Knights, and the Samurai. The Viking Age started in the 9th century. One of the most feared sights in medieval Europe was a Viking ship headed towards your village. That's because they were there for one thing and one thing only, to plunder. Axes became their weapon of choice because of their versatility. They could be used as a tool to fell trees or to chop lumber for boat building. But in the hands of a trained fighter, they became extremely versatile and deadly. You could hook an opponent's shield and pull it out of their hands, smash through armor, and wreak all kinds of havoc. So, let's make one. Using the Nazel hammer, Ilya now breaks down his stock to create the cross section, he's taking it from square to rectangular. Using the punch under the hammer, he now first marks gently where he's gonna work and then goes in and drives the punch into the steel. This tool has slanted walls, which prevent it from getting stuck in the hammer too much, and it's made from S7 air hardening steel. After driving the punch two-thirds of the way through the material, he'll take it out, flip the material over, and punch back through the other side, creating a clean hole. So next, I go and use a tool known as a drift. What the drift does, it spreads the hole. And to facilitate the process, I dip it in oil periodically to lube it up. That way the hole does not get damaged and the punch does not get stuck. The next stage in making our ax is to make the back hammer part known as an anvil. To do that, I made a pair of dies that produce the shape that you see in the game. These are known as spring swages. Using different types of radius tooling and the edge of the dies on the hammer, Ilya now draws down the thick section and creates the blade of the axe. Now that we have the axe head forged to shape, it's time to start on the haft. Our haft is gonna be made out of red oak. It's a little over six foot tall. I'm gonna ovate the whole entire length, add a little swell right in here, and then it's gonna have knot work carved all the way down it. The first thing I'm gonna do is knock off the material for where the axe is gonna be mounted. So I'm gonna check it to the eye that Ilya drifted as I go, take my time and make sure everything fits nice and snug. So I have the majority of our half roughed out now. Did it all on the sanders. You can see some of these little notches have occurred from the edge of the sanding belt. Now I'm gonna use a hand rasp and just get in there and smooth everything out, make it look a lot more organic. All right, you guys know I love my sanders, but this is a lot closer to how the Vikings would have done it. So I'm just gonna keep going, take my time, and I'll hand it off to Ferentz, and he'll begin the carving. Now in the game, these weapons have unlimited upgrades and options, so we're going to take a little artistic license that Ubisoft said we can use, and we're going to do some upgrades on the knot work on this weapon. We're going to go ahead and lay out just some basic dots and start drawing this out so we can move on to the carving. Instead of the knot work just running out off the end, we're going to use a traditional Viking theme and terminate the top with a traditional beast head. I have a very traditional mallet and I have some small petite chisels that I'm going to be carving this with. Now we're carrying the knot work all the way down here. We're going to let the knot work interrupt here because this is going to get a leather wrap and then we'll pick it back up to the rest of the bottom of the handle. All right, at this point we now have the ax head forged. 
Luckily, Ilya did a great job. I don't have to do much profiling at all. Just gonna remove a little material here and on the bottom. And then I'm gonna move to the narrow wheel and choke in these two points here so that they're lower than this plane here. And I'm gonna remove the excess weld that's there from attaching the handle. Vikings believed that the time of their death was predetermined, which meant they had nothing to fear in battle. It was either their time or it wasn't. This gave them a ferociousness that allowed them to control the seas around Northern Europe for hundreds of years. Their ships even reached as far west as Greenland and North America. In fact, it was the Vikings who first discovered the New World. Using a narrow contact wheel, Matt goes in and now cuts in notches for the detail where the anvil meets the axe head. So to terminate the handle on this axe, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating an end spike. The end spike's got a fairly large offset piece that comes out the back, and then there's a series of six other large spikes that go on here, and then a thickened border. We're gonna be using this pipe. It's a fairly thick wall. We're gonna mount this plate on the back side. Big offset spike on the bottom. Six additional side spikes that'll go all the way around here will be welded on, and then we're gonna put on a big fat border. Okay, our next step is we're gonna grind off some material from the side. It's gonna lighten it to make it a better cutting weapon. And it's also gonna make it look a lot more like the piece from the game. I have an ax to grind. Now that Kerry has the end cap assembled, it's time to start forming the spikes. There's six on the outside and one on the bottom. He's just gonna grind these out of some round stock and then apply them later. Ubisoft has really gone out of their way to make sure all the weapons and armor in this game have very specific textures. Anywhere that I've ground and polished this surface has to have the texture re-added like it's forged. While I'm at it, it also has some land jets, strips of metal mounted up the handle. So I'm gonna use this strip of metal. While this is heating up, I'll beat on this one too. After grinding the six spikes that'll be mounted around the side of the socket, Kerry now grabs a larger piece of round stock and grinds the bottom spike with a slight offset. Since the body of our axe is so massive, we only have to worry about getting the edge hard. Billy is going to be really careful getting his heat right where he wants it and then quench it into water. As 
you can see, or rather hear, there's a vast difference in sound between the edge and the back. The back has a softer sound, the edge has a loud, glassy, ceramic -y sound. The reason for that is the edge is hard, and harder materials oscillate at a higher frequency but lower amplitude. The next step in assembling the butt cap for our axe, I'll take our sleeve, Carrie made up a spike for the end, I'll weld that on, then we'll take the ring that we forged, I'll weld it on, then we'll take our little spikes and weld them into place. We're nearing completion on our axe head. It's now been heat treated and tempered. We just have a few final things to do before we can get it mounted. One is a slight curve in here in the beard. I'm gonna mark it with some chalk and just grind it in. When I grind axes, I usually start at a really steep angle and then push it back slowly. Since this one is so large, you'll see that I'm actually bracing the side of the axe against my body to keep it nice and steady or I'll slip and it'll look really sloppy. It's now time to start adding in our battle damage. The marks on this blade look like they're supposed to mimic as if another large axe hit it. So I don't want all of it to be done with a hand grinder. I'm gonna do some of it with a chisel to really make it look like there's been a nice hard strike. Normally after making something really beautiful, I hate adding battle damage. But this is a really neat process and way to do it. And this one has to look right. All right, now let's move on and do one on the edge here. All right, it looks pretty good. From here, I'm gonna just flip it around, do the other side, and it's ready for mounting. To create the right texture on our butt cap, I'm just gonna get it red hot and let it cool unevenly. Repeat that process a few times and we'll have the proper scale on the surface. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna forge out some nails. First, I'm gonna forge the taper, then hot cut them off, move to the vise, and upset the head of the nail. Parents did an excellent job on the handle carving. I really like some of the extra details he added to terminate the knots at the top. My next job, I'm gonna use a torch and lightly burn the entire surface, do a little hand scrub, and then coat it with linseed oil, which will not only seal it, but will actually give the handle a lot more strength. So working from the pictures on this axe, we're gonna wrap it spiral from this direction, wrap it in a spiral from this direction, bring the two centers together and tuck them in. Everything will be glued, tucked under. Then this leather will be distressed afterwards. We'll probably do a little dye over it to darken it down. And then we'll do the same thing over the land jets that hold the butt cap in place. Now that the land jets are attached to the end cap, it's time to put it together. First I use a plastic hammer and drive it on until it fits nice and snug, then I attach my nails into the holes of the land jet. Now it's nice and secure and won't ever fall off.
Viking Age came to a close in the 12th century. In the end, it was their independent spirit that prevented them from uniting into a kingdom, leading to their downfall. With their knowledge of the seas and warrior spirit, who knows how much of the world they could have controlled. Because just look at what these can do. Until next time, stay sharp. Thanks to For Honor for sponsoring this episode. You can wield the Dane Axe and fight for the Vikings in the game available February 14th. If you want to see the construction of the Knight's Peacekeeper armor featured in this episode's demolition segment, click the box on the right. If you want to see the Kenze Nodachi on the last man at arms, click the box on the left.